tristin', but I guess that's what I smoke for. Actually, I've been mobbing in my town like taxis. If you say you got it, then I hope you got my back, please. She be feeling on me, I know she be getting nasty. I'm a beast mode, but that's only if you ask me. <laughs> this is our second filmer. <laughs> What's up, Thrawn Squad, and welcome back. So today I'm gonna be revamping some life in my SSR 125 dip bike. It's been a couple months since I rode it. So first of all, I'm gonna start up that air compressor, put some air into these tires, and I'm gonna get started. Now the first thing I'm gonna know right here is this is a common issue a lot of people have when they first get their McCoonie carburetors, or their knockoff McCoonie carburetors. Uh, a lot of times they have a little bit of metal in the machining of those carburetors, so you're gonna have to take them apart, clean them out, clean the jets out, most, most specifically the jets, and a lot of times you'll clean the jets out, put them back in, and something else will come in, so it's a good idea to clean the whole car out. So let's get started on this. All right, so here we go. We got our carburetor taken apart, laying right here on the counter. As you guys can tell, this was the old one I was running on my bike, and if you look inside here, I'm sure you guys are gonna be able to see there's a lot of dirt and grime all the way around it. So really good idea for me to take this thing apart. So first step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the bottom bowl. I'm gonna take that off real quick, and we can inspect the bottom. All right, so as you guys can see in the bottom of my car, you can probably see there's a little bit of contaminants down there on the bottom. So it's a very good idea to take these off and then clean everything out. Um, for the next step right here, I'm gonna be removing the jets. Uh, two simple, simple, easy things to remove. All you have to do is use a flathead screwdriver and unscrew it. And for me, I like to pull this whole entire assembly apart and I'll explain why in just one minute. So after I take off the main, I'm gonna take off the pilot. And I have a big screwdriver. So. All right, and I just switched to a smaller screwdriver. That way I can make this process a lot faster. So I'm gonna pull off my pilot jet. And a lot of times what you guys are looking for is you're looking for to see light through there. As you guys can probably see on camera, there's either little to none on here. And I'll also put a picture up of what it should look like and I'll expand it so that way you guys can see. Um, I know it's a little hard to see through these tiny holes, but it'll give you an idea of what to look for with your jets. So now that I have both of those taken apart, you're gonna wanna inspect everything. If you guys can look in there, you guys can see that I have some old yellow looking gas in there. My recommendation is to pour it out, uh, dispose of it properly. For me, I have this rag right here so I can collect everything. And then that gives you an idea of you can just look around to see if you can find any dirt or grime in there. You don't want any dirt or grime obviously going to be in any of this. You want it to be as sanitary as possible because if you do have some dirt that's either in the bottom of the bowl or inside the carburetor, what will happen is it'll come down and probably try to go through those jets and it may be too big of a size and get lodged in those jets, which is a lot of times what's causing an issue, especially with brand new carburetors like these, you get them from the factory. Um, they're machining everything, they're cutting, trimming. I mean, it, th these are $30. You can't expect for them to be the highest quality. I mean, they're really good quality, but you know, they're gonna probably be left with a little bit of metal shavings, which I'm sure, which is what this is in the corner right here on the bottom, is that's metal shavings. So good idea to clean these out and blast them out. What I like to do is I like to get a little bit of carbon choke cleaner, uh, walk away from where you're working, give it a nice little spray down, try not to get any in your face. <laughs> and then just rinse it out. A lot of times what that'll do is that'll get everything out. Um, if you're still having an issue right here where I have a cute few little pieces down there on the bottom, I'll just go like this, look away, spray it in there, give it a little bit of pressure, and I should rinse it out and make it nice and clean again. Um, you're gonna wanna do this step with a lot of the parts on the carburetors. I normally recommend wearing gloves. I normally wear gloves for all of this, and I'm using um, my microfiber towel right here. And this is, it may look dirty, but in fact, these are clean. Alyssa and I wash these quite frequently. And then this way I can get all the contaminants out that are in the areas where I think that they might still be stuck. Uh, another thing that's a good idea to do is if you can, just blow a little bit of carb cleaner through here because this is what comes in from the top of your carburetor and fills up the, the bottom of the bowl. And then these floats lift up and stop and then they stop allowing fuel to go in here. So good idea to clean up every single little dent in here, um, especially right in here. Uh, so you wanna get all these areas and just make sure that you get the whole entire carburetor as clean as possible. Uh, so now for the next step, I'm gonna be removing the, the slide on the top. Uh, might as well take the float off and set it to the side, all wants to fall out anyways. So 
Just remember how these setups go. Right here, this is for your float. This goes right in here. So right here, this is the little pin right here where the fuel comes through and fills it up and the float lifts it up to once you get to a certain point, this goes down and stops fuel from entering into the carburetor. So as you guys can see right here, I just pulled this little pin out. Um, the float sits right in here just like so. You pull that pin out, you take this uh, piece from underneath it and just set it off to the side. Uh, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've probably seen other carburetor videos or seen one of my other ones, but if you haven't, I'm just informing you how it works. Now the next step right here is I'm going to take my slide off. Be careful, there's a spring in here and you're going to have a gasket. And I like to just set all the pieces that go together, together so that way you know exactly where they are and where they go. And then right here, this will be your needle right here. So you want to inspect this, make sure it's not bent. You don't have any issues with it. Check inside your slide. As you can see, I do have some dirt in there. So I'm just going to rinse it out and clean it up as much as possible. Spray everything you can with some car cleaner. And then that way you know how everything goes. Um, if you have a, any questions or you're, you're having any doubts on yourself doing this job, because maybe you're not that mechanical, just set all the parts like this on how they go back together. So that way you guys have like your own personal diagram of how everything goes together. Now, with this being taken apart, definitely inspect everything, look down every single passageway that you can see and just give everything a good spray down. Right here, I'll spray in where the pilot jet was. I'll spray down where the main is. Just give everything a good clean. I'll spray down where the slide was. This way it just keeps any contaminants from being in here and grinding or causing the slide to have any issues going up and down. And then just take a look inside here. If you guys see anything in there, clean it out. As you can tell right there, I still have some contaminants right there. So I'm gonna spray it down. And, as, and then afterwards, it's really clean. So basically, if you've taken your carburetor down to this point in time, now it's time to reassemble it. I personally like to start with the jets first. But don't start, don't, don't start reassembling yet. We actually have to clean these jets out. That's the main reason why I took this apart. Um, I don't know if you guys can see through there, but you might see a little bit of light. Good idea to put, and it's really cool because the tips of the spray nozzles actually go in right there. You can use your fingers to pinch it and give it a good squirt. And you'll see some come right up the backside of this jet. And typically that right there is enough to give it a good clean out. Then you want to grab your pilot jet and, re and do the exact same process with the pilot jet. So you want to just stick it right in there, just like so. And then give it a good, good couple squirts. Let it come out. Now, with the pilot jet, I like to do this uh, procedure twice. The first time, I'll just put some liquid in there and blow it out. And the second time, I will grab a... I'll grab a wire brush just like so, and I'll grab a pair of pliers and I will rip one of these pieces out. And then that way I can shove one of these down in the carb and clean it out. It's not 100% necessary. You don't really need to do that. For this instant right here, I'll show you guys exactly how I do it. Um, if you guys don't have a pair of pliers or wanna rip it apart, you can stick this in to the pilot jet and just give it a good little workaround and pull it in and out. And this will give it, this will hopefully unclog anything if you have anything clogged in there. There's little side holes in here. You can go ahead and poke through each individual hole and that will clear out any contaminants that may be left in there. Um, it's a pretty simple process. This is mainly more time consuming than anything. And then I go, like to go through the top. I like to go through the bottom one more time just to try to loosen it up. There sh you shouldn't really have any resistance. And you can see I'm having a little bit of resistance right here when I'm pushing it on. This should go in nice and clean and easy. So that means I have something down there that's clogging it through the bottom. So now that it looks like I've loosened some stuff up, I'm gonna go ahead and spray some carb cleaner through here again. Looks like a knot surge. It's pretty cool. You guys have ever seen the original Fast and the Furious when they roll up and they do little NOS purges? They look really cool. So, 
now that I'm looking through this one, I still can't see a whole ton of light through here. So I'm gonna have to repeat the process and do the same thing. So just be patient with this because you don't wanna try to damage anything, but you definitely wanna get all that gunk out. And that gunk right there, especially in the pilot jet, that's what everyone normally complains about where you have a, where you twist your throttle from a start and it's like, oh, oh, and then it's like, uh, and then it gets on. Um, you know, that's the most annoying thing in the pilot jet controls your low throttle. And then once you're full, th mid throttle, full throttle, the, the main jet kicks in and that's where more fuel comes in to allow the bike to feed more. And then if you say, so if you're having an issue on the low end pilot jet, if you're having an issue on the middle to top end of the RPM range, then it is more likely your main jet. So I'm gonna get this one all cleaned up and then we'll start the, re the reassembly process. All right, so now we will start the reassembly process. Right now I'm gonna install my pilot jet and you don't wanna snug these things down too tight. You just wanna screw them in and just give them like a nice little snug. These, you know, it's not something that needs like you like torque down or anything that needs to be crazy. I've already checked through both of these, seen plenty of light through both, and I'm going to reinstall them. I like to use a bigger flathead screwdriver for the main jet, just to make it a little bit easier, and a smaller one, obviously, just because you don't have a lot of room to turn it around. So once that is installed right here, we're gonna be reinstalling our float. So I'm gonna flip the carb around this way so you guys can see this side where the float goes. And then this should be a pretty easy assembly process. You're just going to want to take the little top right there where it has like that little hook on it. And then you're gonna go up between your float and just set it in like this. So nothing too major, just slides in there just like that, sits loose. So if you have any questions about this, just rewatch this part of the video. I know this is confusing for a lot of people who are newer to carburetors, but it's pretty simple. And then this pin right here just slides in goes right through and just stays in just like that. Mine fell out, so I figured, hey, might as well take it apart, clean it all out, spray everything down. There's no harm in spraying everything down and cleaning everything. So now that I have this part all uh, assembled together, I'm gonna go ahead and then inspect my gasket right here if you guys already haven't. Mine is in good condition, so I'm just gonna flip it around and reinstall it. So now that I have it reinstalled, I'm just gonna install my screws real fast and then flip it over and start the process of reinstalling my, my needle jet and my top half, which I'm gonna actually leave this out of the bike or I'm gonna leave this actually out of the carburetor. I'm gonna leave this out of the carburetor until I take my other carburetor off my bike and then install this one on. I feel so bad removing this Nibby carburetor because it just makes this bike look so sick. And the build quality of these is actually so amazing. I just, if it just ran as good as the other one does, I'm sure this probably runs really good on like a 150cc or something like that. But for this 125, um, just doesn't run that great. And it's weird because the inside, the machining is amazing. It makes the Makuti knockoff look like junk with every single thing in here is like, polished and smooth such amazing build quality i just wish it ran a little bit better so i'm going to be swapping over taking the other carb throwing it on so let's install this i'm not going to show you guys how to do that but for me in my case what i'm going to just be doing i'm just going to be taking these two bolts off since i have the whole entire assembly i'm just going to swap the whole thing take the throttle cable off keep this whole entire piece as one unit since i had to custom make this for the nibby to work on this bike okay last but not least don't forget about the air screw on the bottom uh, it's different for a lot of carbs, but this one, you're gonna wanna turn it all the way in. Don't over tighten it just to where it stops. Then you're gonna wanna go out one full turn right there. So this is a half turn and this is a full turn. I hope that explains a lot to people. So basically you can, if you wanna make it easy on yourself and you're someone that forgets, put a little paint mark or a piece of tape on one side so that way you know when this one has come all the way around. All right, now I'm gonna go install this. I already know where the sweet spot is on this, where this one likes to sit. So I'm just gonna set that up to where it needs to be and I'm gonna go install it back on the bike. And just like that, the carburetor is on. So now I'm going to be dropping the bike going ahead and giving it a fire up and see if she runs. Okay. So after installing the carburetor, I had to wait till another day, it got dark. I didn't want to be mean in the neighborhood. 
but now the carburetor is all clean. The fire's up, no problems. Revs up, no problems. And I think it rides, no problems. This bike I was having some issues with the throttle, not wanting to stay idle, all types of stuff. It's been sitting for a while, but this is a common issue on carburetors when you first get them. So, as you guys can see, I think my son is going to do the outro. Say, see you later. Dream big and stay happy. Say dream big, stay happy. Good job. All right, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. So next video, I'm going to be getting a Nibby carburetor, and it's actually a new one that is more so like the actual Makuni, like the real Makuni. Uh, it does have a few different features. So stay tuned for the next video. I'll give you guys an update, and I'll let you guys know if that carburetor is any good. So remember, dream big, stay happy, and we'll see you next time. All right, you keep going, dude. You like those brakes? Good job, dude.